Okay, this is part two of this same tutorial, building a rigged up track from scratch. So I choose to build something around the stepper drum and uh, we will take it from where we left it. And I hear something at the beginning, I could remove the kick from the start. <laughs> Because there's no surprise and the kick come right in it. We're not obliged to remove everything, but we are building the intro. Okay. So let's say I will select just the intro, control E to cut it from the rest, control J to consolidate it, and I will remove all the kick from it. You can hit zero, it will deactivate all the kick. I think it will be better now. And what we can also do is to put another break. So as I said in the previous tutorial, for the example, I just take the same break every time just to so you know there's a break, but you can build several breaks. What I call break is those drum roll. Okay. So from there, everyone know we go into the, the first verse. And we can also remove the piano or play with it. What I say, play with the piano. So for example, I could take my piano here, even if it's audio, and duplicate it on some time mark from the drum roll. For example, here, here. Yeah, let's see what we have. I... Okay. Like this. Now we got the last symbol, same time with uh, the eight note skunk. Okay. So now we fix the start. Uh, let's go for a melody because a song is not a song without a melody. So I add a MIDI track and we'll choose a melodic instrument. Let's go for an organ, for example. This organ is from Analog Lab. Same way, something I put into uh, uh, instrument rack in Ableton, and I just select some of the little thing I want to control, the few things I want to control. So two things we can do with organ. The first one is to accompany the piano, and we will play in between each piano. So I will give you an example in a minute. Okay, just for for you to know, let's call it, uh, it's called bubble. Bubble style. So I play the same chord as the piano, but in between each, each piano skunk. Okay, something like this. So it may appear a bit old school. I take organ, you could take a, every, every other synth, but something in the mid-low, which will complete the guitar or piano frequency. We will add some, and we'll see later into the arrangement if we keep it. It's okay because it's bring a, a little uh, groove into the track, and we can add some right hand notes into the organ also. So let's go for a ride.
as you heard, I record several uh, sections of organ. Just some inspiration on the fly. So same way, you go zoom to the smallest uh, space between the quickest note. Okay, so I think something like this is okay. So let's go quantize a bit more. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I will leave it like that for the moment and I will see later which one, uh, which portion I put where. Okay, let's listen to the end of the part to see if it still sounds nice. <laughs> You can see here some notes that are not into the scale. And I also know the end was a bit quirky. I can even remove all this and duplicate the previous one. Okay. Just a quick look at the start before cutting. And I do this to be sure I have no other note before the place I want to cut. So this time I want to cut at three. So no note go over there. So I can remove this little part, select my part and control J. <laughs> As I said earlier, I use an organ because it goes quicker. It's a kit of instrument I take for roots, but you can take uh, every other plugin you want. So I will duplicate it and keep one of them for my melody with the organ and consolidate this one before I will call it um, organ skunk because it will go with the piano skunk. Okay and consolidate, freeze track. That way I, I have it in audio and just have one instrument in MIDI. This is very useful. Also when you use Serum a lot, because Serum takes a lot of CPU, you can freeze and flatten and uh, this will be okay. <laughs> So I will leave the structure like this for the moment and we will see later how we will move the several parts into the organ. We can mark them now. So here is for the intro. I will just change the color to mark. Mark it. Okay, still the same. This one is a bit different. Another color, okay. And as it goes with this piano, you can hear the two in solo. And you see they complete each other, organ, piano. And you can give them the same color here. 
Ok. So now let's take this one and call it organ melody. Same way for the lead melody, use flutes, use whatever instrument you want. I just take it to go a bit quicker. So you see, even if the structure have been made randomly, we still have what we need inside of it and some move into the structure and some pitch into the bass, etc. Here, I duplicate the same bass, same part, okay? So I will change the color for you to understand what I do. This copy of bass, I will call it Disto. Disto for distortion, so let's call it bass distortion. And if you want to add some uh, distortion on the bass, the best way is to remove the high frequency. Take a plugin quickly, and first an EQ. And with this EQ, we will remove low frequency for, from the bass. With without so you can help yourself with the the spectrum and bring just get the first octave you can take a yes a filter like this then from this I will add uh, some kind of distortion if I remember well, I already have some, some preset I build. So let's start with this uh, Disto Digit. And I will explain you what happened in my plugin. Okay. So I can remove this one because in my effect rack, I already put um, a filter. So I use the multiband compressor from Ableton. But what I did, I solo the mid band, so I don't have the low. So if I by bypass this, we have everything. If I bypass my saturation, everything. Okay, listen. Okay, so first remove the low frequency. I remove them with this and put the mid in solo. I choose where I cut my frequency here. So I guess 1 and 20 was okay. Then on this, I add a first saturation knob from Softube. So no matter if it's a Ableton saturation or other, I just explain you what I use here in my Disto Digit rack, effect rack. And after this, I put a serum effect so this come when you buy serum, this come with serum and you can use just the effect part of serum to process your audio. So this is the serum now. Oh, there's some distortion, some equalizer, some filter and I, I also write some automation on the frequency. Okay, and at the end of this, I add uh, a track equalizer, an equalizer, to be sure to remove the 
additional bass, sub bass that came with this distortion plugin, okay? And then a utility that will help me to fix the output volume. So I use this technique for what? Because uh, today we listen music to laptop or small speaker or small speaker at home. And if you have just this with some sub bass, you may not hear it and people may not hear it. So it's good to have some uh, mid frequency harmonics that come into the game. And you just choose the right amount of it. Just like if the bass player was um, overdriving the input of his amp. But this is a computer way to, to get to this point, okay? So this was a, a small in-between for how I process my bass. And let's go into a destructive way, I mean, I freeze it and I will consolidate it, flatten. Then uh, I don't do anything with it. It will help me to just push the bass into the mid frequencies. So let's hear with everything from the start. a little mistake in the second part of the organ so I will just duplicate the first part <laughs> So let's go back to the melody organ we'll choose a upper octave this one should be great. And I will add some overdrive, a, a bit of overdrive on it. Overdrive or something called Saturato from Ableton. Okay. So I drop down the output to minus 12 so I can I can go and push the drive. Yeah. Okay, sometimes saturators or drive can uh, make you think it's a bit uh, dusty or crappy sound, but it's it's okay because it will be mixed with everything. Your goal is not each sounds to be great. The goal is the whole track with every instrument sounds great. So for me, I think a bit of overdrive on each track is okay. So let's seek for a melody.
this will do the trick for the dub. So let's just hear. <laughs> So most of the time, for the melody, you don't need to quantize it a lot. This is a melody, so you are kind of free. I, yeah, I didn't do a lot of mistake in it, so I will leave it like this. And it will help us for the dub. So as you hear, I just find a quick uh, chorus, a uh, quick theme melody, like this one. Okay, and then for all the rest, as I knew which scale it is to play on the piano, I just improvise uh, on the spot. And most of the time, the best way is to learn the, the scale of what you play. So in this case, is, I think it's um, D minor scale. And I play, I know the eighth note of this scale, and I just improvise. Other thing we will add before exporting everything in audio, and uh, process to do a mix. So let's add the MIDI track. And I will freeze also my melody organ in that state. And then we flatten it to audio. Okay. And we will choose a color for it. Let's go for yellow. Can still go and modify it a bit. Like this. It will be announced. Okay, so let's go for the horns and I will drag. This one is called contact. As ever, you choose whatever you have. Okay, let's go with it.
as ever when it comes to the melody. I try to play all the way long. So quite simple for this for this one. We will leave it like this. And erase the mistake. As ever, quantize a little bit because we are not machine. We move a little. And as I said, every time quantize but not to 100 percent to keep to keep the human touch seen. <laughs> There's some little, little mistake in it, but this will be good enough for mixing a dub. Then we go faster, we come faster to the point. See? But what I do here is I update the velocity of each note, because for ones, I like them to sound sounds a bit uh, metallic. <laughs> Okay, let's freeze it. Yes, and flatten. Okay. And I will come in the next third part of this one for exporting everything in audio process before it. So the next step will be to process each track and to drop it into another project to mix the dub. So see you in the next part, the boys.